Hi guys. A few weeks ago on Twitter, someone told me that the Stelling submachine gun had been added to the Call of Duty World War II game as DLC. This immediately piqued my interest because the Stelling didn't really see action during the war. So I thought it'd be fun to take a look at the pretty interesting model they decided to use for the game and see how historically accurate it is. The Stelling was added to the game back in April as part of a community event called Blitzkrieg. The model that Sledgehammer Games, the developer, have used appears to be a mix of early prototypes and later production model Sterlings. If we're going to discuss how historically accurate the model is, it's worth noting that it wasn't until the introduction of the L2A2, or Mark III, in 1955, that the Sterling formally became known as the Sterling. Before that, it was called the Patchett Machine Carbine, named after its inventor, George Patchett. The model appears to share some similarities with the original early Patchett prototypes, including the step in the welded receiver, caused by the use of leftover Lanchester submachine gun tubes, and the position of the stock hinge point also appears to be correct. However, it appears to be feeding from a much later curved commercial pattern, Sterling magazine. You can tell this by the zigzag outline at the rear of the magazine, and of course the slight curve, although the game's magazine is seemingly not quite as curved as the real thing. In reality, the Patchett prototypes fed from straight Sten gun magazines. It wasn't until after the war that Patchett designed his excellent 34 round magazine. The model designers have even replicated the slanted, brazed on rear notch sight that was added after the first trials of the prototype. Later prototypes used a rear aperture sight. Interestingly, however, the designers have decided to add a metal guard tab just in front of the ejection port. This is something that wasn't added until much later. And they've also given the gun markings on the magazine housing that mimic the later commercial Sterling markings. We can also see that the model has the Sterling's helical grooves in the bolt. These weren't added until much later, and the early prototypes don't have them. So it seems that the developers have mashed together some of the earliest Patchett prototypes with later production Sterlings to create the model for the game. But the important question is, did the Sterling see action during World War II? It's a good question. From my research, I found no solid evidence, but some compelling hints that some prototypes did in fact see action towards the end of the war. There's a single grainy photograph of some free French commandos which appears to show them armed with Patchets and Thompsons. And there's also an uncorroborated story of one being used by Lieutenant Colonel Robert Dawson, the commanding officer of Number 4 Commando, during Operation Infatuate in 1945. While unconfirmed, I think it's very possible that the Patchet did see some action before the end of the war. So it's interesting that Call of Duty decided to add it to the game. Thanks for watching guys, I just thought it'd be fun to take a quick look at the game's unusual artistic impression of the Sterling. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe, and you can also support us over on Patreon. Thanks again for watching, see you in the next one.